Okay, guys, how you doing? Here's Ben Jones. Um, I've been moving slowly but surely into a more digital format than traditional. So if you look at my previous videos, you saw I did a lot of things with um, brush and nib. Um, so I wanted to give uh, this digital stuff a try. And originally, I think I did one test video when I first got the Cintiq, was um, I did uh, with Corel Painter, I think 13, or X3, I think that's the really cute little name they gave. Um, only because I saw uh, Jonathan Glapion uh, using, that's what he used. So I was like, all right, well, let's see. And I liked it. It was okay. Um, it had its problems. Uh, mostly because, well, I will say the program had less problems than I did. <laughs> so uh, it would just didn't feel right. Um, and then I started watching other videos of other digital inkers. Uh, one something or another i can't remember his name sorry dude uh, <laughs> it starts with an a i believe on youtube and i found the and jonathan rector jonathan rector is probably the one i paid the closest attention to um i went to manga studio and i tried i went ahead and downloaded uh five and I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. It, it, it was relatively cheap. Uh, <laughs> and I was really impressed with the software and how it worked with the Cintiq. And so I liked it so much, I went ahead and got the EX version. Um, and it was probably, you know, a godsend uh, as far as um, doing digital work. So, uh, that's what I'm using now. Um, let's see. I got a bunch of questions about line quality uh, on the Cintiq. I guess some people were having uh, problems with some weird wiggly lines, I guess. Um, I guess it, I don't know if, I don't know how they were trying to use it. And I don't know, you know. One of the things you we kind of learned for doing this professionally is, you know, go fast. <clears throat> and I don't know how fast they were trying to, I don't know if they were doing, you know, let's see, I'll make the brush bigger here. You know, I don't know if they were trying to go slow and this, you know, they started doing, you know, it's, it's the, trying to do this right here as a straight line versus this. This was just boom, done, boom, done. The line quality is, from what I've seen, um, or from what I've done in this so far, the line quality is like, outstanding. Um, I would say 90% of what you can do traditionally, you should be able to do uh, digitally. You know, it's all going to depend on you and your skill ability um, but yeah you should be able to do it um the pressure sensitivity i haven't adjusted my pressure sensitivity in a while so one of the things i did find out was careful with your brush size because uh, i was like i was thinking okay well i'll just use a larger brush on a lot of this stuff that way i can get the most you know the most out of it you know, I can get that really thick to thin line. So what I found out, which you have to be careful on, and again, this might come down to pressure sensitivity that you can adjust in the in uh, Manga Studio, like Photoshop, or use the Cintiq's uh, tool. Um, if you go really big, let's see right here. This is the lightest I can do, right? The pressure difference between this line and this line is minuscule I mean it's you know I'm just barely pressing right here 
just to get this bigger line. If I really put down, it gets crazy. So, depending on your control level, I would recommend downsizing it. You know. now, this is at a 600 DPI uh, size, so, and that's 40 where that pin is. I try to keep it right around there and kind of look at the line, the line quality and how thick they're going, the artist is. And I'll try to at least, you know, almost double the size of that line. See what the circle is about. You know, it's a little bit over double the size of the actual line weight. If if it was somebody like Ed McGinnis or something, I probably would go with a thicker line or maybe even just stay small. But instead of trying to do this really thick line, I would, uh, you know, Just the wrong damn brush. Uh, <laughs> that's the only other problem. I, I'm still new to Mega Studio, so I'm very all like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <clears throat> so let's go here. All right. So instead of doing this really thick line all in one shot, I would probably you know do this in built-in or something, just to make sure to to keep the line quality as crisp as possible. Um, I haven't tried all of these things, you know, I've tried the mapping pin, I think, a little bit. Uh, I kind of like that one, but it's it's not all that different from uh, the um, G-Pin. I think it, it you can get a bit thinner um, and, and move on from there. Uh, that's about it. Uh, the turnip pin, I think this is what I used. All right. I'm not real sure. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of flaky. I don't really like it. I think I tried it once or twice, and I was like, Ugh, I don't like this. The calligraphy fin was pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's it's turned sideways. So you see I'm inking in this direction. So if I ink this way, and uh, there we go. See how it thins out on that turn? I think if I... Increase the brush size. You can tell. See, see the difference. So, um, I think I'll be using that some. Not probably not a whole lot, because I'll figure something out. Uh, I did find this for effects pen, and this is uh, this is all default stuff that comes with the program. I did this stuff over here on the tree. I did this all with the uh, the effects pen because it has some weird thing where it changes the line where so if I was put that line there see it went thin and I was doing some weird stuff just like this just to try to make it all jaggedy and uh, that's kind of how I worked that just as I was experimenting um, I don't know if I'll continue using it texture pen um, Let's see. Uh, I think I used this one once before. Yeah, you can. I, I I think I originally did this tree that way, where you could see kind of some texture on the side. I don't know if I necessarily like that or not. Uh, it it probably has its uses, um, because you know if you look at that line there, you know I'm just kind of just freewheeling, and it doesn't look that much different until I get big, and then you're like, huh. Oh. I don't know. Um, I think that one needs to be adjusted. If you're going to make it a texture pin, make it a texture pin. But, you know, uh, let's see. <clears throat> mm, yeah, and that goes with the, that, you know, I think that pretty much sums it up for the line quality issue or line quality uh, questions. You know, like, you know, I use a lot of brush and a lot of nib, and I really haven't seen a problem at all. You know, um, so if you're having a problem, you know, it might be you, or you might have a driver issue. Uh, I can't really tell you. Uh, the this is the Cintiq 22 HD, um, and the other question that. Even people uh, that have no 
I have a photographer friend, and you know, he was asked, "Should I get a Cintiq?" And uh, I was like, uh, first of all, I'm not the guy to come to ask, but he, I'll give you my um, my kind of look on it for me, and and I'll preface that by saying just for me. Uh, I've been drawing at least, you know, with the ability to draw stuff out of your head since high school. I'm not talking about, you know, professional level or anything like that. So the entire, my entire artistic career, uh, if you want to call it that, it has been on traditional pencil and paper where I look down at the uh, paper with the pen or pencil and I draw. I've tried several different, you know, I, I had the original, one of the original Wacoms and I think this was, uh, well, I don't know if it was one of the originals. It was when I originally got it. It was in like mid 90 or late 90. No, it would have to be late 90s. I tried it. And eh, I, I couldn't really work with it. Then I think I moved up later in years to the bamboo. And with the, uh, then I moved from the bamboo to the Intuos 5. And I just have an issue about trying to draw while looking up at the screen and my hand down on the desk or on my, my lap. With the Wacom, I saw it as a merge of digital and, you know, what I wanted to do digitally and what I could do traditionally. And also, I know some people are like, well, why don't you just get a Surface tablet? I mean, <laughs> my wife has this thing my wife is the most frugal person i think on the planet uh, <laughs> and with her it's always about okay you know can i get the the same thing for cheaper or at least close to the same thing so me and her agreed that we would try some cheaper alternatives to the wacom or to the cintiq we tried an older Wacom. Um, it was oh man, it was bad. I can't remember, I can't remember the the version. Uh, <laughs> and it was so bad. I, I sold it to a colorist friend for for him to color a print. I was like, well, maybe you'll have better luck with it. You know, it's like here, color this print, call it. Uh, then I tried the Bosto King T, which is kind of like, I guess, the Chinese ripoff version of the, the Cintiq. And I had massive, massive uh, driver issues with little to no customer support. So I paid $900 for that thing. And, you know, I think it was about the same size as... Cintiq I'm using now, maybe a little bit smaller, and I ended up taking a loss on that one just to get rid of it. I think I ended up selling it on eBay for like seven hundred bucks, and I much rather you know take the two hundred dollar loss or whatever and move on because uh, they wanted me to. They said, well, it might be a problem um, with the actual hardware, and I was like, well, I'm not the only one having the same problem. And so I'm pretty sure it's not a hardware problem. It is really looks like a driver problem. And then, you know, they were, they were the one I did get in touch with them. They were kind of assholish. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sell this damn thing and call it, you know, call it even. Uh, <laughs> so I said, okay, you know, you get what you pay for. So I told my wife, like, listen, um, <laughs> I'm going to get me a Sadiq and sorry, 
I, I tried the cheaper options, you know, and you know, uh, and I told her, so I like, listen, if this ends up being another failure, the Cintiq is so popular that I don't really have an issue with uh, selling it. You know, somebody else wants it. If I, you know, got it and I didn't like it, I'm pretty sure somebody else. You know, I bought this thing for two grand. Um, and I'm pretty sure some, you know, if I said, here guys, brand new Cintiq, barely used, only had it for a couple of weeks, did, decided I didn't like it, here is it for 1800 or 1900 bucks. pretty sure I could sell it off pretty quick. So that's how I convinced her to let me go ahead and uh, bang out the two grand. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you guys this, I'm not selling it ever. I don't think I'll ever get to the point where I sell this unless a new version comes out and it's just super badass. I'm not leaving this thing. All right. So if you're worried about quality, um, if you don't want to get one because you're worried about quality, I'll tell you right now, you're, if quality is your issue, you're not going to be disappointed. with it. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with it. But from what I have done with it, I'm, I'm very impressed. So, uh, that's me. You know, you, you know results might ver may vary uh, with other people. But for me, this thing is probably the, probably the best thing I've bought side building my own computer um, in the last probably, you know, 10, 15 years, you know, as far as technology-wise. Uh, so, uh, I'll try to put some of those fears to rest for some of you guys on that. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, I, I've tried to do this video a couple of times, uh, but I got a new headset and I guess I had a driver issue or something. You know, I go on these long spills and philosophy of artwork and... <laughs> Guess what? It wasn't recorded. Um, so, it was kind of weird. <laughs> I've, like I said, I've done this video, I think this is the fourth time. And I think I've gotten the whole audio thing licked now. Uh, it, was, it was really not even a driver issue, it was just me being an idiot. So, uh, sorry, I, you know, I probably won't be able to replicate the, some of the stuff, some of the great stuff that I've been able to say. Um, <laughs> but I'll I'll try my best because I did come up with a few things that were like wow I wish I'd have thought about that oh great I gotta say it again I'm hoping um think of it okay <laughs> all right so we went over some things here uh and my review on Manga Studio so far is it's great for pencil and inking I haven't tried coloring in it uh so. Hold on, I'm going to pause this and take a quick break doing something real quick, and I'll be ready. Okay, let's see. Sorry, the wife coming came in. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, Mega Studio is, uh, yeah, I originally bought the 5, and man, I fell in love with it. And so I said, screw it, I'm getting the EX version, and, because I wanted all the plugins and stuff. Uh, and there's a, man, I think I've used maybe 10% of this thing so far, and it's really worth it. Um, it's now my go-to for, you know, drawing and, uh, inking. Hopefully I'll, you know, again, my, um, that's one thing, my goal for digital inking is to hopefully and I'm very, I say this kind of skeptically that I can create a traditional experience for the reader in digital format meaning that if they were to look at this black and white they would have a hard time 
separating this from, from traditional work. That's my goal. Uh, that's going to come down to the skills that I have plus the abilities of said program. It's not going to be just one or the other. It's going to have to be both. I think the software is pretty close right now. Uh, I think there needs to be some things that I think, but then again, this is me with a very limited skill set dealing with the, the digital software because I don't know if I wanted to adjust this pen, I don't know how. Get. <laughs> uh, so those are the little things that I still have a lot to learn. Um, I know Photoshop fairly well. Uh, just Mango Studio. I don't know where all the tools are and how to adjust things yet. So that's coming. With that being said, uh, like I said, I think the software is between 80 and 90% there. I think, I think the only, one of the only things that they could do is add um, some kind of tilt reader to Mega Studio. I don't know if they even have it. I know Photoshop does have on, on some pens and you know where you depending on how you tilt the pen gives you different effects. That way I could you know I know on brushes where I can tilt my hand and get this really blocky look just real quick. But here, you know, no matter if I'm using this pen, this is what I'm gonna get. You know, I'm tilting in different ways here. And that's what I'm going to get regardless, uh, which is fine. I mean, to get different effects, you just have to either change. You have to change something, change brush size, which really won't change the effect. Um, but change pins, uh, you know, change settings on the pin, on said pin. You can do all that stuff. Uh, again, I just don't know how really yet. Um, <laughs> So, one of the things that I, I can't stand when I see digital inking is this weird, loosey-goosey hatching. Um, <laughs> there's some guys that like, oh, I'm digitally inking, um, but it doesn't look right. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't want to tell them that, like, you know, look at some traditional inking with brush and nib and compare it to your uh, inking and tell me the difference. And I'm betting that a lot of the guys, you know, um that started off are pretty early without really learning traditional inking. They uh, like, oh man, this looks great. I can finally ink. And But they never set some of the um, fundamentals of inking into their head. So what they think that looks good, it, you know, it gets killed by <laughs> traditional inking. And, you know, if you you go to like DeviantArt or something and these guys are saying, oh man, this looks great. You know, you're getting all these accolades and praise from everyone. But if you would take a serious, serious um, look at your work, compare it to some of the greats. You know, not even necessarily greats, but, you know, compare it to, you know, professional guys. And if your work doesn't look anything like that, then you might have a problem. Um, you know, and you could be doing, you know, you could be saying, well, I'm doing this special style. Oh, okay. Well, good luck with that. Um, I'll never tell anybody they're doing it wrong. Because, um, you know, they might be doing it right for them, et cetera, et cetera. And that was one of the uh, great philosophies that I had come up with while talking in the previous tries on this video. 
was, you know, a philosophy about art. And I'm talking about this art in general. And it really, I think the only reason I was going over this was I'm in September, I'm going to a convention here uh, in Las Cruces. Uh, I think it's the, it's the first one here. Uh, a good buddy of mine, he owns the comic shop here. And he's the one putting it on. And he wants me to do a panel on artwork, et cetera, et cetera. And it got me thinking, why, you know, why do we do certain things? You know, sometimes it's why do you even listen to certain people? And one of the, I think one of the fundamental things is artwork in general. And I'm not just, you know, talking about comic work, but artwork in general. It's very personal. You know, we put a lot of time and effort into creating these images. Um, but it's personal, you know. A lot of times we're, we're sitting here by ourselves in um, obscurity. And we're... Well, we come up with great ideas, you know, it's like, wow, this would be great if I do this. It's very personal. It's not because someone else is doing it, and it's not some, because someone else is forcing us to do it. It's a, a personal wealth that you're trying to increase within yourself. You know, you know, I, I you know, I want to do what I want to do. You know what? I'm going to screw it. And, you know, all this stuff here, I'm going to f just say, screw it. Fuck you guys. I'm going to spot some blacks. I'm not even going to do this. And, you know, we do it. And what happens is, you know, uh -oh, I don't think I've covered all of it. Um, well, what, I, what happens is with us, you know, be it the right thing or the wrong thing to do, we did it, you know. We're like, screw it, we're, this is what we're going to do. And we do it, and it, it's, it, again, it's a personal thing, you know. It's, it's not about what other people think at first. Um, <laughs> so where I'm getting at it here is you need to be real careful on what you listen to and who you listen to. Um... Because, again, your artwork is personal. The job I work now, I've been doing it, doing this job as far as, you know, real job, or, yeah, real job, I should say, is, or I have been doing since 1996 when I was in the military. And now I do it commercially. Well, this job pays well. Um, it allows me and my family a lot of things. Uh... I used to really, really love the job, but in my heart of hearts, I know I'm meant to do this type of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm meant to be an artist. Oh, excuse me. Dr. Pepper's getting to me. Um, with that said, this is my, this is my fortress of solitude of doing artwork. So this is my fun. Now, if you're getting into this to be a professional artist, and you're, you know, I, w I would say look up Joe Moderera's, um his uh, speaking on professional artists, et cetera, et cetera. I think he hit home on a lot of stuff. You should be able to find that on the web somewhere. But that being said, if you just want to be an artist, you want to draw, then do your thing. Don't worry so much about how someone else does it or what someone else has told you to do. Do your thing. Because even in the professional arts where you're told to draw something and this is what you need, what you do is what first attracted, attracted them to your work. Granted, there is going to be sacrifices where you're going to have to, you know, kind of eat your pride and do what they tell you but what you do and how you approach things is part of the reason you have that job so if you completely go away from what you do and how you do it are you really using your personal interior abilities on a piece 
and I, I and, and this again, this is my personal philosophy. I think if you sacrifice enough of yourself, um, and I mean taking it away, you sacrifice enough of yourself to become the best artist. If you do become the a world renowned artist, when you look at an artwork, do you see yourself in it, or do you see all the sacrifices and all the things that you have cut away to make yourself so th i think that's something especially young artists need to pay attention to be yourself do as best as you can as yourself then when you land the job then look at you know because granted you're going to be following rules and you know if, if someone says i want something painted in a monotone color color scheme and you don't like doing monotone you still have to do monotone so because that's the job you know it's not necessarily doing the art it's the job so that being said <laughs> uh that's why i i don't think i could do this full time as far as dealing you know this is where my mortgage money comes from because i would have to sacrifice a lot from what i like doing and if that doesn't make me a professional artist, that's fine. I've done professional work. I know what it entails. I know the deadlines, etc., etc., etc. So I can do it. Is that my preference? No. Because, unlike some of you guys that may be listening or watching this, I don't have the drawback of having to do this for income. I do this because I love the art form. So that... With that, um, to let you guys know, I am now in earnest, and I know some of my friends, <laughs> some of my friends that are going to watch this are like, uh-huh, yeah, here we go again. Um, I am working on my own comic book. Uh, and this time, I don't think I have anything holding me back. Um, currently, I'm doing concept work for... Valiance Online, and that has kind of showed me, you know, kind of given me a idea of, you know, do I want to do concept work full time? And again, I don't know. Uh, again, it's it always comes down to the job versus personal experience with the artwork. I don't want to sound all hipster, but I mean, it's the truth, you know, it's, you know, my thing. And when I got into comic book work, you know, like a lot of kids, when I was in high school, um, image was pretty big. Uh, it was pretty much at the, the peak of its popularity that, you know, I want to be, what's what? Let me see how should I say this. I never wanted to be a comic book artist until I saw what the guys at Image were doing. And I never wanted to be, at the time, I never wanted to be that guy drawing Spider-Man, drawing Batman, drawing Superman. Unless I created the story. Um, call it naivete or not, but, you know, at the time, I was like, well, you know, if I'm the artist, I should have some say in the writing. And then, you know, some of those guys, they do, but for the grand total of them, they really don't. And that kind of put me off. It just, it's not what I wanted, you know. And really and truly, what I wanted was to be able to do my own stories, do my own comic, you know, tell the stories how, or tell what stories and how I want to tell them. And one of the drawbacks for me, uh, for years, you know, I couldn't ink or couldn't really ink, you know, uh, the prescribed way. You know, I would always have to find somebody, hey man, can you ink my work? I really want to see it inked. 
Um, and I know quite a few pencilers probably have been in that that position. Um, until one day after, I think I was talking with Eldelso Aldos, Corona, um, who was a wonderful inker. And I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to learn how to do it. It was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> but it took me a couple of years to really kind of get it down. And, you know, by no means, I'm no, you know, I'm no super guy at it. But I, I think I, I do enough to get the point across that, hey, maybe this guy can eat. Um, and with the Cintiq, I kind of said, okay, I did the same thing. I said, oh, you know what? Uh, after talking with my buddy uh, Ross Hughes, who's the color for, colorist with Hi-Fi, um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to color. And granted, I just started. Um, but I'm like, wow, maybe I can color. So the other night, I was listening to um, Jonathan Rector's one of his uh, happy sketch times. Uh, you should check it out, guys. It's it's good stuff. Um, and <laughs> I was like, you know, I was listening to him talk about, you know, wanting to do his own comic, et cetera, et cetera. And something hit home in for me. I was like, you know what? Why haven't I done my own comic book? I mean, it's not a and it's really not a question of can I do it. You know, it all, I always come up with some kind of excuse. You know, I don't have the time. Uh, I don't think I'm good enough. Uh, oh, well, I need to be, it needs to be colored. Uh, it needs all these things. You know, whatever excuse you want to use, I've used it. And, but, in the back of my mind, I'm always saying, fuck, I want to do my own comic. And so when it sits back like that, oh god, I don't like that. I'm gonna have to work on that. I'm using a very low res of this. Uh, Adrian Saif put put this on his DeviantArt. Kind of, I I took it as kind of like a challenge, and so I'm having issues finding stuff in here. Um, but back to what I was saying about comics, I was like, I really want to do my own damn comic, uh, and working in the uh, game design stuff you know it's like okay am I the question you know comes in comes into play that or you know or am I wasting my time am I doing what I want to do I mean I love those guys but and you know, I love the work um, but you have to sit back and think like am I wasting my time and and really and truly it's not a waste of time because you're learning uh, new avenues, you know, you're 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 adding something to your arsenal, and that's fine. But as far as the end game, you know, you know, when <laughs> when your artistic or ob obituary is written, what do you want it to say? What are the things that you accomplished that you wanted to be there? And my thing is, I want to do my own comic. I do want to do my own video game. Don't get me wrong. But it's just not... I don't want to just do the art of the video game. Uh, I I would love to... Which I was... Um, doing some stuff. Also, guys, the I don't know if I said it, but the game I'm working on is Valiant Online. You should be able to find the page. Uh, it's It has a YouTube and a Facebook page. Um... So I used to uh, kind of be more uh, on the design team of the game, um, which for me was great. Uh, I had a lot of great ideas um, I thought was great. And uh, it just, you know, we needed art to be done. And really and truly, you know, I just, I don't know, you know, because it wasn't my game, and you know I wasn't the one that come up, that came up with the game, even though I've had the same idea. So 
it was pretty hard for me to divorce myself or take a back seat to ideas that maybe I didn't necessarily believe were the greatest or even wrong. You know, I'm sitting back and I was, you know, you know I was kind of screaming, you know, in the back of my head, like, God, this sucks, et cetera, et cetera. You know, but, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to shut the fuck up, and, you know, do the work. And so I had to concentrate more on the art side. Uh, I'm the only real artist that we have right now. So, and I'm like the de facto art director. I'm directing myself. <laughs> But as you guys can see, back to the art, you know, enough of that crap, but, you know, back to the art, uh, I'm going to be working on a lot of, a lot more digital and over time, I'm going to start doing videos, um, for my comic book creation. I kind of want to start from the very beginning, um, and show videos and, and to, to try to encapsulate, you know, the entire process of, you know, creating something from the ground up. And creating a full-fledged comic book, you know, on your own. Yeah, I have to learn how to letter. Um, I can do a little bit of it in Manga Studio, but there's a lot of stuff I'm going to have to do in Adobe Illustrator. I can do the coloring, I can do the inking, I can do the penciling, I can do the writing. So, I mean, that's most of it right there. Um, and we'll see where it goes. As you can see, uh, let's see right here. This is going to be the name of the book. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. Um, I think you can pretty get an idea. Don't worry about that texture. I just put that on there. I don't like that. <laughs> um, this is a mock-up of the logo. Uh, I usually have a buddy of mine uh, do my logos, uh, but he's been really busy as of late. And I've had this guy create like several different logos for different books and books that I never completed or never really even got started on. So in instead of going the same route of, hey man, can you do this logo for me? You know, and following into the same pattern. Again, I'm trying to do everything on my own. Uh, so I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do it on my own, I might as well start with the logo. I knew the name of the book. I've got some... Uh oh what is that? Uh... Okay, let that can go away. I got a lot of crap open. But <laughs> um, I have... Uh... Since I said, okay, if I'm going to do everything myself, I'm going to do everything myself. So this is the mock-up of the title. I have brainstorming done. I already have a, a general idea of what the story is about. Um, so that I've had that for several years, but now I'm just starting to flesh it out. And, you know, hopefully I'll do some more videos. Uh, that's probably going to be the next videos of me trying to do stuff like this as far, as far as the comic book. And next, I believe the next video I'm going to do is doing some concept work for Valiance Online. Um, and that'll be it. Uh, I thank you guys for your time. I'm glad you came check me out. Again, um, feel free to email me or leave messages here on the video. And I'll try to get as much as I can get answered. Talk to you later.